you go to shops or I mean like places to get groceries or things. Oh, well, in them in days, the well, like when the bombs <coughs> were on. There was little corner shops. There was no big supermarkets. There was little corner shops who used to sell what you wanted, and butter used to pat it. It went in packets, and I can remember being sent as a child. Seymour Meads, it's gone now on Stretford Road, that's gone. And you used to have to ask, could I please have a lamb chop, sixpence, and will you cut the fat off? I can remember that, because every week I had to go for that for my father's ration. And well, the thing I remember most was spam, and that came from America. You could do most things with spam. You could make a meal out of it, because by the time they were already done it, all, you got a bit fed up with just having spam. There wasn't a lot of food. Greens, not so bad. But bananas, oranges, they were a thing of the past. We didn't know what they were. I mean, even when they came in after the war, bananas, not seen a banana. <laughs> didn't want to know what it looked like. And now you can buy thousands of them. You don't know how lucky you are. Yeah. No, we didn't because we had no garden. Only people with gardens could have an, a shelter. Did you go to the air raid shelter then? We did, yes. When we were outside and the air raid sirens went, we did go outside, but mostly if the sirens went and I was in where I lived, I used to have to take my stepmother down the stairs into the cellar, hopefully, that we'd be safe, as I say before. I don't know whether we're that safe when I come to think about it later years. Smell like terrible, horrible. We didn't put them on unless we had to. And you know, now and again, we had to put them on to make sure they were working. Mainly I can remember reading and writing was the most special thing we were taught. You had to read and you had to write. And if you didn't do very well and you were lacking in interest, you got a whack on the wrist of the teacher. Did you ever get whacked? Yes, a couple of times. <laughs> I tried to avoid it. <laughs> How long? Sometimes it was seven till five, and sometimes it was seven, well, seven. And I must tell you about that. We used to get a break when we worked seven, well, seven. And in the canteen, these were special meat pies and everybody used to go flying down to get to the canteen because there wasn't a pie for everybody. They're the most delicious thing during the war that I can ever remember, those meat pies. I've never tasted one better. <laughs> what sounds did you hear in the factory? Sounds, riveting. There was mostly riveting. Because you see there used to be quite a few people working on the shell of the planes. Um, were some of your friends worked with you? Real friends? Yeah. Well, they were acquaintances at first, but when you worked with somebody for, you know, three and four years, you came to know them very well. But you didn't really socialise with them because they lived in different areas, you see. Did you go to a victory celebration? Yes. Went to all of them. Um, kissing everybody. Um, what did you do in the victory celebration? Well, there wasn't much to do, only go out and enjoy and, and kiss and hug, no matter who it was, because you were that pleased the war was over. It was like a Europa feeling that you hadn't got to be frightened any more of a night time. And I think possibly the first time I slept for eight hours. <laughs> we kissed everybody in sight. Soldiers, sailors and airmen, no matter who they were, we kissed them.